This thing is an ART Pro VLA and VLA stands for a valve leveling amplifier. So basically a compressor with tubes. And I bought this thing myself to review on YouTube and it costed me 429 euros, which is super cheap. So let's take a look at it. So the first thing I saw already on the product pictures, but in real life it's even better, are the rather large view meters in front of here. Now they give the whole compressor a very nice look and I'm pretty sure they work well when you want to impress your client. However, they're not really functional. Uh, they only display input and output level and this for me only comes in handy when I want to level the left and the right channel. But that's pretty difficult to do on these view meters is what I've noticed. Now the analog view meters do not display the gain reduction. That is being done by a LED bar below, which is, I mean, it's also fine. But apart from that weird little quirk, if I can call it like that, it's actually a pretty well built unit. The front is made out of brushed aluminum and it's a pretty thick plate. All the knobs are made of metal, which gives it a little bit more high end feeling, although it, it, it's, it's not a high-end compressor. All the buttons however are made of plastic but solid plastic so not that cheap plastic that you feel like you can snap off anytime you push it. Now important to notice that all the knobs are stepped which makes it great for recalling. I've got a lot of analog gear that doesn't have steps in it and recalling is a hell. When we take a look at the inside of the compressor we'll see that everything is built on a PCB which is logical for that price. You cannot expect point to point wiring for such a low price. And on the PCB we also see where the magic happens, the tubes. And after a closer inspection, I noticed that uh, they are using the 1287 tubes from a brand called China, or I think a country called China. I think they are unbranded tubes and I'm really interested to see what happens when I replace those tubes with uh, you know, branded ones, like probably RCA tubes or something, whatever. Now the 1287 tube confirms what I was already thinking. And that is that this compressor is not a tube compressor. It is an optical compressor with a tube stage built into it. Now, the difference is that the compression does not happen in the tube. The tube is actually just there as an amplifier. Whereas in a real tube compressor, they're using a technique called a very mu or variable bias, which does the compression in the tube. To be honest, you cannot even expect that for this price. In terms of controls, there's one pretty important thing missing from this uh, compressor and that is the input gain. What I've noticed from using it is that it is pretty sensitive for the amount of gain that you're giving it on the input. It's pretty easy to drive into distortion and on the other side if you're too low on gain it doesn't give that character that this thing is supposed to be giving you. Or maybe it's not supposed to be giving you but the character that I like. But apart from that, you've got control over almost everything. You've got, of course, your threshold, which has a pretty wide range. You've got a ratio from two to one until 20 to one. So you can go from subtle to pretty aggressive. And you've got control over both the attack and the release times. And for an optical compressor, I find that it actually has pretty quick attack times. The attack times can go up to 0.25 milliseconds. The last thing you're getting is of course the output level and you can gain up to 20 dB extra. And also an important thing to notice here is that it doesn't bring up a lot of noise when doing that. A lot of these cheap compressors create also a lot of noise and I'm actually pretty impressed by how quiet this thing is in the signal chain.
it's also possible to switch the compressor to a stereo mode. And when it's in stereo mode, you use the controls of the left channel and the output control of the right channel suddenly becomes a balance between left and right. And I really wish I had it on my SSL Mixbus compressor clone. Really, really, it's so handy. Now when using this thing as a Masterbus compressor, it sounds way better than you could expect for that price. Now, if you want to use the Pro VLA in your setup, you of course need to have an analog signal path. This thing accepts both XLR and jack on the back. And this is one of the places where this thing gets a bit cheap. Again, it is cheap. Um, the XLR connectors are not locking. So the female connector, you can just pull out the plug, which is important to know because if you're mounting it in a desk and the connector is hanging out of the back, you have a bit of resonances, it could be possible that the connector falls out. On the other hand, you can also open the box and replace the connector for a good one. But I think that's where it justifies its price. Now the big question is of course, is this thing worth its price? I would say absolutely. It is pretty impressive, considering the very low price point. Now I'm comparing this thing with a few other compressors in the same price range. The difference that I see between uh, the Pro VLA and other compressors is First of all, sound quality, and this is from a signal to noise uh, ratio point of view, but also from a tonal point of view. Second thing is build quality. This thing is built way too good for its price. It has an all metal chassis. It's really, really well built. It's like, it's super steady. Uh, whereas the competitors, it's mostly plastic products. And I think it will last for a year before something breaks on it. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure that this thing can survive longer. Now, if I need to describe how the compression sounds, I would finally use the word glue, which is a word that I do not really like because it's being used to describe some compression that I don't find sounding like glue. But this thing really brings things together in the music. And another interesting thing that it's doing, it's actually smoothing out the high end, the top frequencies. And this is something that I really like on digitally produced sounds. Most digital produced sounds sound a bit plastic in the top and are a bit harsh. And this thing actually takes very good care of that. That doesn't mean that that's technically correct, but I don't care. It sounds great to my ears. So let's stop the arguing. Now, as always, I like to be very clear about my relationships with manufacturers and I have no connection with ART whatsoever or art, what, what is the? I don't even know how their name is pronounced. I bought this thing myself with my own money uh, because I was really interested in it and I'm planning on doing some modifications to it. But more on that in a later video. So if you want to stay updated, make sure to subscribe using the subscribe button down below somewhere. Also below in the description is a link to ART where you can check out this compressor and some other stuff that they're making. Even further down below is the comment section where you can rant on uh, whatever you want, I think. Now, if you like my videos and want to support me, that is greatly appreciated. And you can do that by pledging a bit to my Patreon campaign, which I'm going to link over here. Another way to support me is by buying my merchandise, which is linked under the video. And the last way to support me is by watching more of my videos, of course. So I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Keep pushing and bye bye.